Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making a really fun, colorful light display. One of the things I really love about this build is there are only three main parts that I need to have to do this with, but I'm gonna modify all of them to give it a slightly different purpose than it was intended. In a recent video, I actually took this LED light strip and broke down step by step with great detail how to cut it apart and put it back together for different purposes. So instead of repeating all of that content now, I'll just give the high level overview and go on with this particular build. I was originally going to create a kind of my own version of a shadow box to make this in, but honestly, I found a great one at a great sale price at a local craft store. So I just took the fabric off the back panel and repurposed this for my new light display. And it worked out really well. I do think the only drawback to not making it myself was that I was stuck with trying to make the lengths that the LED light strips come in fit exactly to the size that is within inside the box itself. So there were some things that I will point out towards the end of the video, this being one of them, that were key lessons learned that I would do different next time. I don't know, but you may be asking yourself right about now, how does he know if he's putting these back down in the same order that he cut them apart in? And the key detail here is, it really doesn't matter. The only thing that you need to make sure of is that you connect the right tab to the next piece that you're connecting. And that keeps all the current flowing in the way that it was meant to. And I'll give a little bit more clarity around that in just a moment. If you're not a fan of soldering or don't necessarily feel that you have the skills, don't let that make you think that this is the kind of project that is out of the potential for you to make. I'm actually gonna put a little tip on screen in just a moment that gives you a shortcut you can take, but you're gonna have to pay a little extra to get some parts in order to do so. Okay, so yeah, I liked playing connect the dots when I was a kid, but to be honest, there's ways to continue to do as an adult and I'm kind of enjoying this too. In fact, I mentioned just a moment ago, as long as you line these up right, the connections are quite easy to make and you don't have to keep the pieces in the same order. And this is the key to that. Connect R to R, G to G, B to B, plus to plus. And in the event that you're using just plain white lights, you only have two connections to make between each one, positive and negative. Now that I'm comfortable knowing that the lights work the way they're supposed to, I can go ahead and get on to the next step of this project, which is addressing how it's going to look from the outside when the box is closed up with the lights inside. To do that, I'm using some diffusion material. I literally bought diffusion material to do this, but you can experiment with other kinds of materials to get the effect that you're after. Personally, one of the things that I wanted to accomplish 
was not being able to directly see each individual LED from the outside when the lights are turned on. I'm using a nylon material, which works really well when I'm just trying to reduce the amount of sharp light coming off of a light bulb or other light source. But when it's this close to the actual bulb, I'm actually going to need two layers. A special thanks to Rania for the suggestion on using hot glue to keep the layers together this way. It worked out quite well. As it turns out, I had to come up with a different approach because my original plan wasn't going to work. And because I was under a self-imposed timeline to get this done, I felt the need to improvise and just get it done. Keeping the two pieces of fabric together with hot glue worked out exactly like I wanted it to. However, trying to glue it to the inside of the frame did not work out as well as I'd planned because it turns out the inside of this particular frame was too slippery for the glue to adhere too well. And as such, the fabric didn't stay stretched out as well as I would have liked for it to. So I ended up going back and taking some small dowels and just helping them into place to force the fabric to lay flat against the glass. Now for the moment of truth. Go ahead and plug in the power, flip it upright and turn off the lights, get the remote, and it's doing exactly what I was hoping it would do. So remember how I said there's lessons learned? All right, if you're gonna make this, I do recommend ironing the fabric first or at least making sure you get rid of the wrinkles somehow. I would definitely alter the spacing of the LED strips so they reach the edges of the inside of the box and then make sure to go ahead and set the fabric stretched out well onto a frame that you can slide down inside the box. I really do appreciate that you took time out of your day to stop by Dialed In DIY to check out my video. If you got some creative ideas out of it, enjoyed it a little bit, or at least just had your boredom reduced some, I'd love it if you'd go ahead and let me know by clicking that thumbs up below. While you're here, please subscribe and ring the bell for future notifications. Feel free to check out my playlists, share your comments, and as always, come on back in the future because there'll be plenty more dialed in DIY to come.